Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Mark Green here, the Diabetes Diet Guy, bringing you free information about diabetes management, weight loss, and healthy living. If you haven't done so already, make sure you check out the blog at diabetesdietguy.com. Now today is a video that I realized I have not actually made, despite the fact I blogged about it lots of times, and that is the glycemic index. But we're gonna take it one step further than usual. So if you don't know what the glycemic index is, you're in the right place, because I'm gonna tell you what it is. But there are extra considerations that people need to make with regards to their blood glucose levels that isn't always widely advertised. So if you do know what the glycemic index is, keep watching because we're gonna go one step further. But first, let's start with the basics. So what is the glycemic index? Well, when you eat certain foods, it has an effect on your blood glucose levels. Now, obviously in diabetes, this can be very relevant to your management because foods that have an effect on your blood glucose levels can result in hyperglycemia or high blood glucose levels. So it's actually the carbohydrate containing foods that we're concerned with when we're talking about the glycemic index. And all it is, is a measure of how quickly those carbohydrate containing foods enter your circulation. So in other words, how quickly when you eat carbohydrates does all of those carbohydrates get into your body? And then we can give it a score based on that. So we can have high glycemic index foods, we can have medium glycemic index foods, and we have low glycemic index foods. We can also shorten glycemic index, so I'm not just constantly saying glycemic index, to GI. So you might have heard of the low GI diet. That's what it's referring to. So we can actually draw this out in a graph format to highlight our point. So let me just get out my trusty pens. So if we draw out a graph like this, here we have time. And here you have your glucose levels. So we have two types of absorption essentially. You have something that would be considered high glycemic index. So if it's high GI, it means it's getting into your body very quickly. Your body does not have much trouble digesting that food. So it can turn it from the form that it was in when you ate it into glucose to be used as energy really quickly. So something like that would look like this, in quickly, and then your body would release some insulin and bring your glucose levels back to where it wants them to be. Now obviously in diabetes, sometimes that can be delayed and actually you can see that the rise stays higher for longer. So that's one reason that your glucose levels might go high after eating. However, something that is considered low glycemic index, in other words, you get less carbohydrate or less glucose entering your system at any one time, would look a bit more like this. So as you can see, it's got a delayed absorption because it takes longer for the body to break down those carbohydrates. So really what I compare these two examples uh, to is we can call this almost like the waterfall effect because you get a big rush of glucose entering your system all at once. So that's your high GI. And then we also have the drip effect, which is your low GI. Now, as you can see, if we were to measure your glucose levels at a particular time point, namely here, it could be the difference between a high glucose reading and a pretty reasonable one. I don't know what to call that. Um, let's call it reasonable glucose level or in target glucose level. Now this might be despite the fact that you've eaten the same amount of carbohydrate at these meals. It's just how your body deals with them. Now, if you don't know where the carbohydrates are in your diet, I have made a lot of videos on this. Check out diabetesdietguide.com, look at the different dietary advice pages, and it's all there for you. Alternatively, look through the YouTube channel, we've done it, it's there, okay? But that is glycemic index in a nutshell. But it isn't without its problems. And the reason is, is it only factors in how quickly you absorb these carbohydrate containing foods. So it doesn't factor in how much carbohydrate is in the food. And ultimately, it is the total amount of carbohydrate which is the biggest factor about what your blood glucose levels will do. 
whether it is a more favorable carbohydrate containing food, which is slower releasing. So an example of that would be like brown rice, brown pasta, um, porridge or overnight oats, new potatoes, kind of lower GI foods compared to your higher GI foods, which is more like your fruit juices, your sugary drinks, your sweets. Um, but when we look at these lower GI foods as well, it doesn't factor in other foods that are high in carbohydrate, but still quite low glycemic index because of other factors. So if I told you this actually more closely resembles chocolate's absorption because there is fat there, you'd probably be surprised because you would think chocolate isn't good for the diabetes and it probably isn't in large amounts, but it is actually quite slowly absorbed because fat slows down the absorption. Whereas something like watermelon, really easily absorbed by the body. So you can see a big rush of glucose entering your body and then it drops away as your body releases insulin. Or if you're having struggle, or if you're struggling to keep control of your glucose levels, you might find a more steady uh, decline as your body kicks back into gear or you take some medications to help you. So, but, but let me ask you a question on the basis of that. What do you think is worse for your diabetes? Watermelon? or chocolate. And that gets to the crux of the point really. So what we really need to be doing is not just thinking about how quickly the food is absorbed with the glycemic index, but actually how much carbohydrate there is in the food as well. And this gives us another measure beyond glycemic index and it's called glycemic load. Okay. So glycemic load takes the glycemic index, the GI, multiplies it by the carbohydrate content in the food and divides it by 100. Now you're never gonna be doing that on the ground, but what you can do is make informed decisions about your dietary choices in relation to your blood glucose response based on some very simple principles. And actually when we use this measure, glycemic load, rather than the other measure of glycemic index, it starts to look a bit more like you'd expect. So if we go back our page, when we look at our watermelon that's quickly released into the body, yes, it's quickly released, but actually there's such little carbohydrate in the food that you barely get any spike whatsoever. You need to eat a huge amount of watermelon for, for it to have an effect like that, <laughs> tons even. Whereas chocolate, yes, it is slower releasing, but because there's so much carbohydrate and sugar in it, it will slowly be absorbed, but it will slowly push you up very high if you eat enough of it. Don't get me wrong, if you have one square of chocolate, then you're managing the portion which then makes it a lower glycemic load meal. So we have two factors, how quickly is absorbed and how much carbohydrate there are. And when we do that, things start to look a little bit more like you would expect from a diabetes diet perspective, particularly with type two diabetes. Although we don't really use the term diabetes diet, it's still more healthy eating, but let's look at it on the balance. So high glycemic load foods, medium glycemic load foods and low glycemic load foods. Now, if we only used glycemic index here in the high, we'd have things like white bread, white pasta, white rice, um, cereal when you add milk, because when you soften foods, they're more easily absorbed, juices, sugary foods, um, sweets, things like that. However, in the medium and the low, you would then have like your chocolates and your cakes and your biscuits and your desserts because it has the fat there, slows it down. So that's why that's not necessarily the best measure. And also you would have a lot of low glycemic load foods in the high glycemic index part. So in here as well would be things like watermelon and certain fruits when we know actually they're not having a huge impact on your blood glucose levels. So when we use glycemic load, like I say, it becomes a lot more like you'd expect. So now we have things like the white grains still, they would stay there, white pasta, white bread, white rice, very highly processed carbohydrate containing foods, and they are very carbohydrate heavy. So we have a combination of both factors. We have high glycemic index times high carbohydrate content, therefore it's high glycemic load. So the load on your glucose levels is going to be high. 
Now, if you're someone that's struggling to control your glucose levels, particularly in type two diabetes, where you might have some insulin resistance, you're gonna be putting your body under strain in terms of trying to control those glucose levels. So white grains, definitely in the high category. Also, things like desserts, biscuits, cake, chocolate, all live in here now. So it's starting to look a little bit more like we'd expect it. Highly processed starchy foods, desserts, sugary foods, all live in here. Then the medium foods would be more like your whole grains. Whole meals. Some people would call them brown foods. So again, these are more like your starchy carbohydrates, but now we're going for your brown rice, brown pasta, seeded bread, porridge oats or overnight oats, kind of those foods that I was mentioning earlier. But rather than being in the high, they stay in the medium. And the reason is, as we go back again, because they're pretty slow released, so they get a low GI score, but they are still very starchy, very carbohydrate heavy. So that compensates for that, and therefore they fall into this medium glycemic load category. Some may even still tip into the high just because they're very carbohydrate heavy. Rice, whether it's white or brown, has the same carbohydrate regardless. It's just more the nutritional value and how it's absorbed. So where we really make the difference though with this glycemic load is foods like the watermelon. So in here we have things like vegetables, most fruits, will live in here. There's not a great deal of carbohydrate in your dairy products, so milk and yogurt, unless it's been added to with things like sugar, so it's a flavored yogurt, will live in here as well. Now I'm not gonna give you an exhaustive list because like I said, I blogged about this a lot, so check out those blogs. And I'm just conscious that this video will go on too long if I do. But we can start to see then that actually when we just talk about glycemic index in its most basic form, it doesn't paint the whole story. And I hear this all the time. I heard it today actually at work. Someone said, I don't eat any sugar. I don't understand why my glucose levels go high. Not appreciating that it's the starchy carbohydrates that can also impact their glucose levels. And then taking that one step further, it's the type that you're also eating. So we have a two pronged effect there, which you really need to consider. So glycemic index is a great starting point, but we need to be taking it that extra step further to really optimize your glucose control, particularly in type two diabetes, particularly if you've been having problems controlling your blood glucose levels. This is also relevant for type one diabetes, but then that's more to do with insulin timings and insulin uh, and um, so insulin timings and also the spikes that you might see after your glucose, um, sorry, after you've eaten a meal. So insulin timing and the glucose response after eating a meal. These are things that I talk about in both my blood glucose recovery program for type two diabetes and my glucose stability program in type one diabetes. All on the website, check it out if you're interested. Anyway, I think we'll leave it there. Um, so we'll get this up on YouTube. I will also post it on the website. So thanks for watching guys. I hope you found it useful. Comments below if you have any. I always try and answer them as I can. Subscribe, like, and if you want to know when we post, then turn on the notifications. Leave it there for today and we will see you later.